What yeah. is an <laughs> oxalate for the people out there that are just like, okay, what? Yeah. So oxalate is a tiny chemical that's all over nature that we don't even talk about. It's fascinating because if you learn the history of oxalate science, it's in a, one of the very original chemistry uh, molecules that in chemistry they use for all kinds of purposes. And it's been around, we've been using oxalate as a industrial cleaner since the 1780s. Oh. It's, it's, we use it every day. If you use certain cleaning powders like Barkeeper's Friend and Zud have oxalate in it. You can use oxalic acid to take the rust off of a radiator or, or pull the rust stains off your your concrete deck or your wood, or you can bleach fabric. I mean, it has all these uses. So mm -hmm. it's this little chemical that plants make. They use it for lots of purposes. It's really critical to many plants for their survival, reproduction, uh, their general health. They need it. And, and they also have figured out how to make weaponry with it. So a lot of the plants we consider edible, most of them are human inventions, by the way, that if you were pre, you know, 500 years ago, or even 10,000 years ago, there just isn't a lot of plants that you would willingly give a young child because yeah. you'd be putting them at risk for emergency room visits or death. You know, a dog even eats your house plant. In fact, the, the plant behind me, surely if a dog ate that, we the dog would be dead because it's like yeah. toxins in plants. Yeah. Uh, but we're not really aware of that. So in the meantime, plants are secretly building oxalate and they're building it as crystals. And for example, in trees, they put blocky crystals of calcium oxalate in their bark, which makes great sense because it makes it hard for the beetle to drill holes into the tree and kill the tree. Some plants like a kiwi fruit makes oxalate crystals. This is calcium oxalate. And plants build these crystals. There's there's these different forms of oxalate. It's the little molecule that's two carbons. Lots of oxygen, by the way, on that little molecule. It's very oxidative. Four oxygen molecules attached to two little carbons. Carbons means it's an organic compound. Plants make vitamin C first to turn it into oxalate usually. That's often the, the metabolic pathway. Then they add calcium to it. And then they, they string the calcium oxalate up on these little sort of structures made of proteins to create specific shapes of crystals. And the one in the kiwi is a double pointed toothpick called a rapide. And they make them like arrows or blow darts and sets of quivers of like 200, 400 of these toothpicks in these little vacuoles. And when the cells get damaged, the, the plant can actually project these little blow darts that come with proteases and soluble oxalate molecules and enter your tissues to, to like tell you to back off, quit eating me. <laughs> and it, that can be really serious. People who have taken dumb cane, which is another kind of tropical plant that we use in the malls and house plants, you can end up in the hospital for a week or more unable to speak because it paralyzes your vocal cords because the immune reaction is so strong to the damage that um, that's why it's called dumb cane because it paralyzes your ability to speak. So plants are doing a good job of, first of all, I think that's, I like to think of that as inventing warfare. If, if, you, if you can do quiverfuls of arrows and harm things that are way bigger than you that have teeth and claws and feet and can run and you can take them down with one drop of sap, you're doing pretty well as a plant. <laughs> so defense is usually what you hear about oxalates and plant mm -hmm. production. For their cell, but they also use it for many other purposes and tend to put them in seeds, not only to protect the seeds, but to save calcium. It's like a pantry. This calcium oxalate they build, these crystals can be broken down later during germination and use the calcium as a cofactor and enzymes to help the germination process. So it's it's there's lots of reasons plants use it. We have not figured out uh, how to genetically re-engineer plants to lower their oxalate production, although there's been a lot of attempts at that, like spinach is a really high oxalate leafy green. And they've try and try and try, like, could we make spinach still function without producing all this oxalate? And they can't.